Okay, so question 11. Let's give us this uh, proof and then they're going to ask some questions about it. Okay, I'm not going to read through it first, I'm just going to go straight to the questions. Okay. Because uh, usually by asking the, answering the questions, you sort of get some understanding of what's going on with the proof instead of having to waste time reading it through without any help. Okay. So simplify and make appropriate substitutions. 11.1. Simplify and make appropriate substitutions to show that w dash <coughs> equals, so that's like the derivative of the Ronskian, is equivalent to w dash equals zero as claimed in line c. So in line c, yeah, you, you take, you take you, in line b, you've got the Ronskian, and then in c, you differentiate the Ronskian, and so you might, oh, you actually do the differentiation, then you simplify, substitute for y1 dash and y2 dash. I don't know what substitution you do. You get w dash equals a1 xw. Okay, well, so how is this going to work? So this, uh, this is the right skin. So it's going to be, the derivative of that is going to be derivative of, so the first term, so you have y1 dash, y2 dash. I'll take some product for y1 y2 dash dash minus y1 dash dash y2 minus y1 uh, y1 dash y2 dash okay is there any simplification that we have what do we get we have y1 dash y2 dash ah we minus so those cancel out and we're just left with y1 y2 dash dash minus y1 dash dash y2, okay? Substituting for y... Ah, substitution we can make is from this differential equation. The differential equation says that y dash dash equals moving the a1s and things to the side, minus a1 y dash minus a naught y. Okay. So then if we sub that, sub that in for... Uh, so, we, so we have two, one, one of those for y1 and one for y2. y1 and y2 are two different solutions. So we're going to have, so the, if we have this y1, we're going to have what? We're going to have y1 times y2 dash. So that's going to be like minus a1 y1 Y one dash. No, it's 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 y one times y two. Uh, that's good because it's going to make the run look like a run skin again. Okay, so we have y one times y two dash dash. So that gives you minus a one y one. So y one times by y two dash minus a naught times the so y one again and then y2, oh, y2, okay, then, then the next term, the minus y1 dash dash times y2, you're going to get minus a1, then minus a1, and it's, it's uh, y1 dash dash, that's y1 dash, then times it by the y2, and then Oh, but that even becomes plus because there was an extra minus there, and then also plus again. And there's extra minuses there. A naught um, y one times by y two. Okay. So the a naught y one and the a naught y two will cancel out. A naught y one y two those will cancel out, and we'll just be left with a one times yeah times the run scheme. Cool, that's going to work. So let's just do that neatly. So this is. 11.1, and what we do is we say, we say oh, it's W dash is, of course, just the run skin, derivative of the run skin, so it's Y1, Y2 dash minus Y1 dash Y2, the derivative of that, which is just Y1 dash Y2 dash plus Y1 Y2 dash dash, then minus y1 dash dash y2 minus y1 dash y2 dash 
okay? That equals y1, y2, dash, dash, minus y1, dash, dash, y2, okay? But then y2, dash, dash is actually minus a, was it a0, a1? This comes first. Uh, the thing is, it's minus a1, y dash, minus a0, y. Minus a1, y2, dash, minus a0, y2, minus, then, oh, here we have the y1 dash dash, so that's minus a1, y1 dash, minus a0, y1, okay, and then times by y2. So now we do this multiplication. We have minus a1, y1, y2 dash, minus a0, y1, y2, then plus a1, y1 dash, y2, plus a0, y1, y2. So the a0, y1, y2 terms cancel, and you end up with, and I'm just going to change the order, I think, because, yeah, to make it look like a wrong skin. So we end up with what? We end up with minus a1, no, I don't use the order because the wrong skin is that order. Minus a1 times by y1, ugh, whatever. You end up with minus a1 times y1, y2 dash, the a0 things cancel, and you have so plus a1 times y1 dash y2, but that's nothing but minus a1 times the wrong skin. Okay. That's it, right? Okay, cool. Now we just show that f dash not f dash equals naught is claimed in line e. So that okay, so line e says that f equals y one over y two, and there's that that means that f dash equals naught. Um, why where does that come from? Okay. Uh, maybe just just do the use the quotient rule on this, I guess. So what f dash equals? I can never remember which way around to do the quotient rule. Something like, well, it's definitely over y two squared, and then it's the top. It's like what? It's like maybe is it y one dash y two minus y one y two dash, or is it the other way around? Uh, one way to find out is you just sub in y two equals one because then it's just f equals y1, and then that should give us y1 dash. So if you sub in y2 equals 1, what do you get? You get, yes, you get y1 dash. Whereas if it was the other way around, if we had, if we had uh, y1 times y2 dash minus the, th then subbing in would give us a negative. Yes, subbing in y2 equals 1 would give us a negative. Okay, so this is the right quotient rule. And now this top is, is the wrong thing, isn't it? Is it the run skin? Not quite the run skin, it's the negative of the run skin. Right? Run skin is. Yes. And the thing is that. Is that zero? Ah, yes, E says W zero everywhere. So, okay, that's zero. So that's how the proof works. Okay. So. Uh, so that was 11.1. Now 11.2. So it's, we're taking the derivative of f, which, because f is actually y1 over y2, we're taking the derivative of y1 over y2, which by the quotient rule is uh, y1 dash y2 minus y1 y2 dash over y2 squared. So that's actually just negative of a Ronskian over y2 squared, but the Ronskin is zero everywhere. So it's zero as w equals zero. Okay, so now we've gone to 11.3. So 11.3 says, explain how f dash equals zero leads to y1 equals c y2. Oh, well, if f dash equals zero, then f is a constant and f is y1 over y2, so you solve it. 
why does that make why one why two linearly de dependent? Because then one of the one of the things is a one of the functions is a multiple of the other function, and that's that means it's dependent on the, on the other function. Okay, so f dash equals zero implies that f, which equals y one over y two, equals zero. Oh, equals constant. Sorry, some constant in R. And that implies that y1 equals c times y2. OK. Um, let me rather like this. It implies y1 equals c times y2. So I'm, and then I'm just going to say that c sum constant real number. Okay, so now, so y1 is a scalar multiple of y2, so y1 is dependent on y2. So the set y1, y2 is dependent. Okay. 11.4. What does this argument prove? I think it, it proves that if the Ronskin of a the Ronskin of a pair of functions is is zero everywhere, then the set is linearly dependent, right? Is that just read through it and see what that's one? Why one why two be solutions? Uh, the Ronskin's that. Did you find the derivative of the Ronskin? A solve differential equation. You get f equal y1 over y2. Why would, what's the point of solving this differential equation? W is... Oh, okay. The fact that w is actually a times e to the this integral means that it's... Ah, it means that it's either... If a is not zero, then the Ronskian is never zero because the exponential of something is never zero. But if a is zero, then it's zero everywhere. So Ronskin is either zero everywhere or non-zero everywhere. So if it's zero everywhere, then the set is dependent. Yes. So if it's zero everywhere, so it's like if it's zero somewhere, then it's zero everywhere. So that's what that, that's what that following differential equation gets. So if it's zero everywhere. Uh, so if it's okay, so it's saying that if the Ronskin is zero of any value, then it's automatically zero everywhere, and the set is dependent. If the Ronskin is non-zero for some value, then it's automatically non-zero everywhere, and no, it doesn't actually. Then it doesn't say that therefore it's independent, does it? We don't actually prove that that being non-zero makes it independent, right? We just prove that if it's Yes, so we prove that if it, so the same thing proves if it's zero, if the Ronskin is zero anywhere, then the set is, the set is dependent. That's what this, that's what this proves. Okay. So, so that. Um, okay. If the, they actually call, didn't actually call it the Ronskin, did they? So, oh, they did, yes. So, if w, which equals y1 dash, yeah, so y1 and then, it's y1, y2 dash, sorry. If the Ronskin, if y1, y2 dash minus y1, y2 equals 0, For some it's a function of x, yeah. For some x, for some a for one x, then the set y one, y two is linearly dependent. Is 
linearly dependent. Okay. So that's the end of this question. Right?